Hello, this is Dr. DeVazier, your organic chemistry instructor. The purpose of this video is to give you some key tips for Lab 7, supercritical CO2 extraction of limonene. You want to work safely in the lab. Um, primarily in this lab, the main key is going to be um, making sure that you don't burn yourself with the dry ice. Uh, for one, everything else is uh, relatively straightforward. We actually have some uh, mechanical safety issues in this lab, which is uh, a sort of a new one for us. Uh, the new techniques that we're going to be learning are um, uh, dealing with uh, new fluids like supercritical carbon dioxide and um, some of the issues involved in, in pressurizing dry ice. So um, that's actually kind of a, a unique thing in organic chemistry lab. We want to ultimately leave the lab with um, uh, some efficient extraction techniques and uh, quality spectra um, for, your, for your limonene extract. And then, of course, think about what you're doing. Make sure that you're um, doing things reasonably and with common sense during this lab. I think you'll have a really good time. This should be a very fun lab. Now, even though we're dealing with natural products, um, you want to make sure that uh, you, you do use some uh, protective equipment. You want to use gloves when you're handling the concentrated extract of limonene. Even though they're natural products, they can actually have adverse health effects in high concentrations. Um, also, and we shouldn't have any uh, open flames in the laboratory, but organic liquids in general can have relatively high flammability ratings and should be handled very carefully. Um, dry ice is uh, potentially dangerous because it can cause uh, skin burn, so you want to make sure that you handle that carefully. You're going to be working with small amounts of liquid, so be careful not to spill any of your materials. This is much more of a waste disposal issue um, and an efficiency issue rather than a safety concern. Um, your flammable liquid will go in the flammable waste. You shouldn't have a whole lot of waste to deal with, um, but again, if you're going to be taking an infrared spectrum of your limonene, you can do that um, with the NEAT limonene. The term NEAT just means uh, without any solvent added, so you can just take the uh, infrared spectrum directly and then when you rinse out any um, of your glassware just make sure you can do that with uh, soap and water or with the ethanol rinse. Always if you have any questions just ask your instructor. Um, you want to make sure that uh, you take a look at any of the technique tutorials on infrared analysis or sample preparation in case you need some review. Um, that's something that you've already done so you should be fine. Um, you'll need to take a look at the lab protocol and the online pre-lab quiz. Melting point's not an issue, that's simply a typographical error. Sorry about that. Alright, so um, the main thing here is that you're going to be dealing with uh, spectra. Um, and so that's either going to be infrared spectra um, or uh, some alternative form of, uh, um, of output. So you want to make sure that your sample name is clearly indicated on that spectra. Make sure you have multiple copies so that you can um, uh, have an extra in case anything should happen to your original copy. You also want to make sure that you have some uh, record in your laboratory notebook. So this is primarily a technique lab. Um, we're going to be doing some extraction and working with instruments. So again, pay attention to sample preparation. Take your time. Have some fun. Enjoy the lab. Uh, figure out cool ways of um, uh, maximizing your extraction efficiency, um, following the basic issues of surface area and, um, and um, uh, total amount of um, extraction time. So time and surface area are your, are your friends uh, in this laboratory. Pay attention to your lab instructor. Um, uh, that's really key for this uh, lab. Make sure that you have... Um, uh, any information, additional information from your instructor that you need to have. Like I said, this should be a pretty fun lab. Again, um, as usual, we're going to have a grading rubric that you will use as a title page. Make sure both uh, lab partners' names are on the front. Um, the uh, signature should be there for full credit. The experimental procedure as a general method should be um, typed in the laboratory report. Your results sections should include the information given to you um, either from the SDBS data output uh, in terms of, so the spectral database of organic compounds, in terms of an infrared assignment and characterization, uh, or from some alternative uh, spectrum. Um, that should be tabulated. 
And the appendix needs to include both laboratory partner notebook entries. That's about it. I hope you guys have fun this week. I'd like to thank Dr. Brandt, Dr. Weatherman, Dr. Allison for all their hard work, um, the Aldrich Chemical Company, Journal of Organic Chemistry, and the GEMS database for their help in supplementing this laboratory. I'd like to thank you for your attention. Have a great week.